We've made it to January in the second season of our DOF Almeria save. Ida Johnson's tricky, exciting, young Spanish team is proving to be, well, exciting so far. They're doing okay, but we've just got a bit of really bad news, actually. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Hello, welcome back to the DOF Almeria save then. Season number two, where Ida Johnson is our current head coach. We finished six last season qualifying for the Europa League we are now going for after a big rebuild in the last video and I talked you through everything that I'd done over the summer transfer window we're going for Europe again aiming high for the Champions League spaces which I think is possible and going by how the season's gone so far is definitely possible but we've had some bad news as I mentioned before which is which is this Romeo Lavia it was a big money signing in the summer, a real, a real key part of our rebuild, really, in that defensive midfield spot. He's broken his leg in the most recent game, which was against Alce, and he's out for four to six months. That's it, four to five months, if we send him to a specialist, costing £14,000. It's a real blow, actually. He's played, I think, every single game. If I go on his profile here, and we'll talk you through, I will go through all of our results so far. He's played 19 matches already this season. He's a really good player. He is, I mean, look at the value in there. Uh, he's broke his leg, so that is not great. We are going to send him to the specialist, but that does bring me to a little bit of a discussion that we need to have today, which is how are we going to replace him? Can we replace him with the money that we've got? Do we buy somebody? Do we loan somebody? What are our options? We're going to have a look at the transfer market and see what we can do about this because I do think we need another one. We uh, There's been a few comments actually talking about this. Our squad... It's pretty thin on the ground. We've got we've got a really good young squad. If I just sort it by by this here, look, you can see some of the ages. However, some of our backups are 17 years old. Hedwig Koch is a really good example of that. He's played three times, three starts and four sub appearances, meaning he's getting himself on the pitch. He's only 17 years old and he is a real prospect, but you don't really want your backups to be 17 years old and basically children now, do you? Which means we're probably going to need to go and find somebody to come in as as a starter. We've got Berkovic, who I'm not sure about his... I mean, he looks pretty good. I'm, he hasn't really developed as much as some of the other players. He will probably need to become a starter right now. I don't know if it's quite enough. So we're going to go into the window and see if we can find a solution to this. That's going to be part of today's video, as well as, of course, talking you through every result so far from the start of the season to January the 1st, where... As I mentioned before, we've done okay. We're fourth in the league. We are currently in the Champions League places. We are just about in those places because actually we played an extra game. And if Espanyol win their game in hand, they would leapfrog us and push us down to fifth, which is not what we want here. But we're in the mix. We're in, we're in with a chance of finishing in this top four and qualifying for the Champions League, which I think is... Well, maybe we're just above expectations. I think fifth was probably the most likely position to finish this year the season preview did have us as the third favorite so maybe we're slightly underperforming if you're looking at that i'm not sure i think with the teams that are in this league Villarreal are really good by the way with real madrid and barcelona in there atletico madrid i think we're doing about right to be in fourth and i'd like to think that we can cement this position before the end of the season because i've seen a lot of promising things from this team i'm going to show you all the results now but before that let me just do a quick plug and just say, if you're still enjoying this series and you're still jumping on these videos, thank you so much for being here. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. It'd be really cool to hit that next target, which is 45,000, which would be really cool to hit. I think 50k before the end of FM23 is my stretch goal, but 45k, the next one, please do subscribe if you've not done so already and leave a like on the video. Aim for 500 likes like last time. I'm a... Uh, recording this before i've seen a couple of days before so right now you're on a hundred and 183 likes so i reckon you can get to 500 there anyway let's get back into this let me show you the results of this season so far where we're going quite well and chavez caratero our star striker is scoring goals again 21 years old now still scoring lots of goals in la liga let me show you the results and here they are. These then are the results. We were at this Malaga game in the last episode, of course, the first game of the season. It was a good win. And I actually want to kind of tie that up by in today's episode, playing a match or watching a match against Malaga again to see have we made any progress? Where are we at from the start of the season, which was a really pretty good win, wasn't it? In the end, that 3-1 where we went and watched Watching Man 
Or oh, we were, were watching man to go and watch it, weren't we? It was Veya, Aguia, and Caratero with the goals in that one. Since then, it was a good run. We beat Atletico Madrid, beat Sevilla, lost to Real Madrid, drew with Lazio. We are in our Europa League. We're still in the Europa League league phase which is a double league there we're doing okay at the moment we are qualifying for the next round we're at least going to be in the playoffs hopefully we qualify for i think you miss out that playoffs round don't you if you go through we're in the mix right now just above liverpool which i think maybe that shows just how well we're doing actually as a club we've we've definitely propelled ourselves into the conversation with some of the more elite European clubs, which is how you're going to attract future players, etc, etc. We're doing okay in the Europa League. I'll show you the actual results, but I guess I can show them here, can't I? Six games played. Those are the six games played there. We have beaten... Oh, I mean, let's look at the wins. We've beaten Victoria Plzen. We've beaten Carrier Bag 6-0. That's not... I've said Carrier Bag. Carrier Bag. We've beaten Admiral Wacker, who are... They are... Is that an Austrian team? I think it is. And then Midtjylland in Denmark, 2-1. So some good wins there. And we've drawn with Sporting Lisbon away from home and Lazio at home, which is the one that we looked at just here. So I think those are pretty good results. Did we... It was without a loss, right? We've not lost any games in the Europa League. Again, it hasn't. And I don't know if this is something that doesn't happen anymore. I thought playing in the Europa League would put our reputation up to Continental. It doesn't. I suppose... Champions League is what changes this to Continental, which would be a huge step forward for us. We're still regional, but three and a half stars. We're doing okay. Our value is at 200 million. I think we can still improve that, by the way. And also, I want to really improve these, but we don't quite have the money for that right now. Just because it's part of the DOF role, we're at 35 million pounds, which isn't a lot of money in the bank at the moment. With pretty rich owners, we do maybe need to look at that. We don't have a transfer budget. And our wage budget, we do have some wage budget left over. So I'm thinking when we do go and look for that replacement for Lavia, probably going to need to be a loan. We've got 80k there, look. So just bear all that in mind. And I do want to mention that in, the, in these videos because that is part of the DOF role, isn't it? Of course. Just moving through some of these results. Don't want to dwell on these too much because you can kind of see what's going on. And you can see the goals that Caratero is play, uh, scoring in these. And I'll show you the tactic with everybody in so you can see their performances on an individual note but i kind of want to just show you what's happening and then the squad building aspect is the main part of the dof role isn't it you see the results here we lost to batiste in this one we do lose one or two we had a little bit of a weird run right before this january window where we lost to atletico madrid 5-2 this is why i kind of say i think we're doing okay because there are really good teams we beat atletico at home lose to them 5-2 away from home we lost to Villarreal. I told you they're really good. They are just really, really good. And uh, some other results in there. Barcelona we lost to, for example, as well. Some big wins. We had Orihuela in the Spanish Cup first round and beat them convincingly. Some backup players actually playing in those games and scoring in those games. And that reminds me, actually, there is one new player that I didn't show you in last episode's transfer episodes. Remember, there was a little bit of extra budget left over and we were thinking about do we need another attacking midfielder a number 10 type player i went and spent some money it's actually risen to 15 million pounds because he does play a few games in here 15 million could go to 24 so actually a decent amount of outlay on him but i'm looking at the potential once again a belgian player in behind the strikers i think we've got ourselves another hopefully a bargain 21 years old he's got under 21 caps for belgium as well maxence jarry has come in and is playing a fair few games as well let me show you the individual performances and then as i mentioned before i'm going to go to this malaga game here and play it as well as hopefully finding a replacement for lavia in today's episode and uh, let me show you those individual performances then let's put the team in goalkeeper has been matthew colon our main man the goalkeeper of dreams I, I honestly he is so good he's developing as well i think he's getting better all of these lovely up arrows as well for a 21 year old keeper the value He's looking pretty strong, isn't it? A lot of conversation in the comments down below about how he does have a 50% sell-on fee to uh, that will go to Freiburg if we do selling. Meaning, we spend about 70 million on him, or we will spend about 70 million on him all in. We're going to need to sell him for 140 million to make our money back. I think we can make more than that. His release clause is 190 million. I think he's going to be the best keeper on the game. I think he might already be quite close to it. And he's got no cons now, except for his training focus to improve his technique. His technique, by the way, is... I don't think it was that bad. Is Where is his technique on here? It is... Does it show you it? I'm not even sure it shows you. Oh, it's here. 12. It's not even that bad. So I think we've got ourselves a real worldie in goal, haven't we? He's our keeper. Right back has been Pozo slash Fernandez. They've been sharing it. 
Fernandez now, we uh, looked at him last episode, has learnt this wing-back role, can play as a right-back now. Accomplished is his role there. Not yet natural, but he's been playing a lot of games. 22 starts for him, alongside Pozo, who's played, was it 19? 19 starts for him, so the youngster is getting in ahead of him. Left-back, we have got Markovic or Aaron, but Markovic has played more games. So the youngster, again, is getting in at left-back ahead of... Uh, the more established player in Aaron, whose contract is running out in the summer, by the way. I've just noticed that some teams are looking around him to offer him a contract. So he's probably going to go is... Yeah, he's, look, he's got a bid here from Cologne and Anderlecht. So Aaron, who's on 37,000, so it's quite cheap wages, actually. He's probably going to leave in the summer. He hasn't played as many games. We've got Markovic playing those games instead of him, who I'm not sure. I'm looking at him now. Maybe doesn't quite have the potential that I was hoping he would have. He's He looked good, 3.2 million, but... One that's maybe not been as much of a hit as some of the other youngsters that we've signed who have huge values. Just to show you, actually. Should I show you the values of some of our players? Because they are astronomical. So I'm thinking if we do qualify for the Champions League, if we were needing to raise money, look at the values of these players. They are, I guess, because they're in good form as well. It's helping with the potential on them. But like over 100 million of like four players and then between 50 and 100 of like another four players on top of that. Some of these guys are the next big thing. I'm almost certain of it. Let's look at the defense too and just fill this team in because I think it's useful. The Akabi has played 19 starts from him. Left center back Luis Perez, another one with those massive values. Look, 80 to 109 million from him. 20 years old, wonder kid. He is starting at left center back a lot. Two midfielders, we've had Lavia as definitely one of them. He's played 21 times and then Moretti as the other. Berkovic, we looked at him before, played seven. He's probably going to need to come in now unless we find that replacement. Not sure which way around these would go. And I don't actually, they're playing, he plays different roles depending on which player is playing. So it probably won't be a ball winning midfielder. That's what I've put in because Lavia is probably the ball winning midfielder. In front of those though, right hand side, I think it's been Alejandro most likely. Pozo's played a few games as a winger actually, but uh, we've got Alejandro with 15 games. Aguiar played quite a few games too. Six as a starter and 16 off the bench. So he's definitely getting himself into. But Alejandro probably first choice. Freitas in behind the strikers. Let me just sort these and then the right way. 24 starts for him. Four goals, seven assists. This guy could be better than Chavez Caratero, you know. Potentially in the future. I, I think he's really good. As is on the left-hand side, Charles Veya. If you look at the star ratings, it's a decent little guide, I suppose, to see just how well they're doing in terms of in, in, in comparison to the rest of the squad. Charles Veya, again, look at the value. This guy, I'm surprised that the PSG and teams like that aren't sniffing around this guy because, good lord, is he good. Five goals, three assists, 7.1 average rating. Real, real player. This front, this three behind the striker is really, really cool. I wonder, actually, could we, and I think I'd like to, could we get Alejandro for another loan yet? Not yet. Too soon to extend his loan deal. I think I'm going to try for a third season. I quite like doing that on, on FM. Two loan seasons, look. Oh, he's played a lot of games in both, and he's really, really important. Up front, you probably guessed it. Chavez Caratero is the main man. 23 goals in 25 games. Some of those in other competitions, but 14 and 19 in the league. He is he's a goal scorer, is Chavez Caracero. He's our main man, our number nine. He scores our goals. I love him. He's so good. He's got 14.52 in all competitions in his career at Almeria, which is very good. Very, very good indeed. So he's the main man on the bench just to show you some of the other players that are playing a lot of games. Pozo, Aaron's played some. Lavia obviously played loads before that. Geffroy who we brought in as a backup left winger, inverted winger on this side. He's either footed, but slightly more, slightly more left footed, but can play as an inverted one on this side because he's kind of good with his right foot too. Played a fair few games as well, as well as the new boy, Max Sense Jarry has played three times or three starts, nine sub appearances. Six starts for Aguila. We saw him, I think, did he score a goal in that first game? I think we did in the last episode, didn't he? And then no real appearances for the youngsters. Robin Bertrand, no appearances. Uh, for him, he has been playing for the under 19s and Chevalier, not as no experiences, no, ex, no experiences. I guess that kind of works. No appearances for him. He's got loads of value, by the way. He's wanted on loan. I wonder if we do loan him out to Deportivo La Coruña as a good bit of experience. Potentially, I'm going to explore that up that as a as a thing during this January window. Hedwig Cock has played three starts as well. Oh, that's a good one. Antonacci, lots of starts for him. How many was that exactly? It was 12 starts for Antonacci. 
this guy is actually getting himself into the team in place of Perez every now and then. So he's a good option. Perez sometimes playing left back and Antonacci playing as a starting centre back as well. The, the squad that we've built is, is being a squad. Even the young players are playing some games. Uh, one thing to look out for is there's a few people who are unhappy. Good Johnson's not very happy. He's only scored the one goal. He's had one start. Has the uh, the manager's son, Andrew Lucas, Good Johnson. Did score a goal, which I think is cool that he scored a goal, but is now uh, unhappy and wants to leave. Keiki is once again unhappy because he wants to go out on loan, not playing as many games. I think there's a few more that might want to leave too that we might need to look at. But that's how everyone's been getting on. What I'm going to go and do now is get myself up to the next match, which is against Malaga. We will, in fact, it's not. We're going to play the Badajoz game in the second round of the Spanish Cup. I'm going to get ourselves up to this Malaga game. We're going to watch this game together as a live com. I'm also in that time, which is the next 10 or so days. I'm going to go and see if I can find a loan replacement. I think loan anyway, a replacement for Romeo Lavia. I've had a quick look at the uh, the players that could be available. I've just done a search based on do they play as a DM? Are they an EU national? And are they interested in coming to us on loan? I've noticed one name. I'm going to go and see if it is possible because I think I love the narrative of it. Marco Pinto. He might cost us a little bit of money to, to, to do the loan, but I think it might be worth it. We signed him for Spurs where he's played... Uh, this is the first season. He played a load of games for Will Still in the first season. Hasn't played much since then, but he's a very good, tall, which I like as well with the jumping reach in there. He's a really good wonder kid DM that I think would fit into our team. 20 years old. He kind of fits with the picture. If he could come on loan, I really like the narrative. I, I, I'm going to see what I can do. Otherwise, on the flip side of that, Golo Kante would be interested in a loan. Maybe I'll do something with that. I'll see what I can do. I'll come back and I'll let you know what I've done as we get ourselves up to that Malaga game and we'll watch it as a live com. I will see you then. Okay, so it is the 10th now of January and some some bad news really. I I tried to sign Nico, who is the midfielder that plays for Barcelona, who is Spanish, she's 27. He was available for loan. We only have to pay his wages, which is £37 per week. And he was all happy to come and then... He's decided to sign for Nice. He was going on a free contract at the end of the summer or in the summer, I should say. And uh, he's decided to go there on a permanent deal. So we've missed out on my first choice for a loan signing to replace Lavia. And the other one that we really wanted to go and sign, which was Marco Pinto. If I just go you and show you the filters that I was looking through here. He, um, he would cost way too much money. I'll show you here. Look what they wanted. They wanted me to pay... Something like, I mean, it, this is what I offered. I offered them 60k per week and then an optional feature fee of 150k. They've rejected this. They wanted, I think it was about a million pounds per week, which works out at 7.5 million pounds. It's too much money. We don't have the money. We've got 7k to go and spend. So we couldn't do the Marco Pinto thing. I thought Nico was a good backup. It doesn't look like it's going to happen. And nobody else on this list is really catching my eye somebody that I really want to go. I don't mind the look of Aster Vranks as a player because he can sometimes develop and quite, be quite good. I don't think he is that on this save. The only real one that I can think of being useful is potentially Juan Manuel Mbom, who I don't think would cost too much. And the reason I'm looking at him is because, and most of these, just to say, by the way, are asking for a transfer fee or to pay money for the loans too. Amadou Anana would be great. Fabian would be great. They're, they're asking for too much money that we just can't afford. And I've gone through most of these players that are on this list. The reason that I'm looking at Mbom is because actually, if you ask Idega Johnson, who should we loan as a DM? He's on the list. Look, he's one of three players on this list. Juan Manuel Mbom, who is at Borussia Mönchengladbach. Or we've got Alvaro Sanz, who is a Spanish midfielder, who doesn't look terrible, actually. Could be an option. Or Matthias Lugo. None of them really look amazing. And Bomb, I think, is probably the best of what is not a great bunch, but should be quite cheap. He's actually injured right now. What's that injury? Three to seven days. He's transfer listed there. I think this should be quite cheap. Let's just see what they would want. They'd want 26k a week and then a mandatory fee of... Uh, six million pounds can i make that one now an optional fee they'll probably want a little bit more optional fee of eight million we could do this i'm thinking maybe just because we need a player in there we need a number really that's the thing isn't it we just need a body to come in and be an option 
I think I'm going to loan Manuan, Ma, what, Manuan? <laughs> Jean Manuel Mbom, who was Idaka Johnson's choice. So I think that kind of fits the narrative enough for me. So we're going to go for him. And then the other thing we're going to do is, I'll let you know if that goes through, by the way. The other thing we're going to do is, we're going to get Watcher Man to come and watch this game against. We're playing Malaga. Let me just move across to me and make sure that I go on holiday. I'm going to go on holiday. We're going to get ourselves into this Malaga game now, who are 10th. I'll see you as we go out to play at the Estadio Juegos del Mediterraneo. Probably not said like that. I'll see you in the game. <laughs> just wanted to say, actually, as we head into this game, I've stopped because Harry Kane has just signed a new one-year deal at Spurs. He's staying for another year. He's 35 now, turning 36 in July, and he signed another one-year deal. His physicals are pretty much gone, but I just thought that was interesting. Our former team, he's staying. Will Still is just apparently wanting to keep him. He's led them this year. Will Still's got them second in the league. They are in a title race with Manchester City again. It's a slight improvement on last year. They are hopefully, I wonder, if they're going to get their uh, their title back this year. Let's get ourselves into this game, though, and concentrate on the matters at hand for us personally which is Almeria, of course. Malaga is the team we're going to play. Let's go and find out who Idega Johnson is going to play in that team. Get ourselves into the game. Okay, here we go. Teams are warming up and we're on our way in. I've just looked at some of the other results. We probably need to keep an eye on some of the other teams that are around us, don't we? Which was, who was the team that was threatening to go above, above us? It was Espanyol, I think, right? We need to keep an eye on how they do because we're in a bit of a battle with them at the moment for fourth place. They haven't gone above us though, which means I think they might have lost. They're winning. They beat Atletico Madrid 2-0, so they didn't lose. We're underway, though. Aaron's starting left back. We've got our first highlight of the game. Alejandro on the right-hand side. Could it be a quick start? Fernandez. Veya! Charles Veya heads in. We talked about him earlier in this episode. He is a real, real prospect. Ten goals for the season from him. It's a lovely setup as well by Alejandro, who retrieves this slightly overhit cross. Brings it back, though, onto... It gives it back to Fernandez, I should say. It's a good clipped ball in. Good header from Veya. We lead early. This is nice. I was just looking at this result down here. Espanyol, I don't know if it's a result or they're just winning. We've got a free kick, though, whilst we look at that. Chavez Carretero, good effort. Good save. He's got free kicks in him, you know. UCC, which is his initials. It's not sure that nickname is uh, is going to take off too much, but it's quite a long name to keep saying, isn't it? Chavez Carretero. There's the league table. We would go above them. They'd still have that game in hand, look. So they beat, I think that is a full-time score. They've beaten Atletico Madrid at home. They look like the real deal, Espanyol, this year. They're going to be tricky to, to make sure we finish ahead of them, aren't they? Here come Malaga. Cobo. Cobo? Cobort. Not sure. Uh, here, they can we make a tackle? Are they going to score? Roberto. I think that Roberto, by the way, is the guy that is the top goal scorer in the league, joint with Chavez Carretero. There's our team, which we've not really looked at. Oh, actually, there's actually something interesting in this. We don't have a defensive midfielder, do we? We were wondering if it was going to be Berkovic. It's actually Luis Perez that has started. So we do need to bring somebody in because it means Antonacci is starting at centre-back. Perez, our centre defender, is now playing in midfield because of the injury to Romeo Lavia. That's an interesting development. We do probably need to get this deal for and bomb over the line and hopefully that means he pushes back don't want him to play out of position too much he's playing as a ball winner midfielder as you can see i'd like him to stick with playing as a defender because that's where we want to play him in the future but he could probably do a decent job there let's see if we can oh, there he is on the ball by the way let's see if we can see this game through and uh continue what has been a good season so far dear carby there's antonacci who's starting a game moretti who's the club captain Luis Perez, Diacarbi, patient build-up. I don't know if we're still gegging press. I need to check that, actually. There's Freitas with a horrible finish, actually. Half-time, we're 1-0 up. We're winning the game. We're doing okay. Eilika Johnson's doing a decent job with whatever style of play he's choosing to do. We'll let him do the team talk and get ourselves back out there. One goal lead is a little bit scary, but we're doing okay. They haven't actually had a shot on target. They've had three yellow cards and no shots on target yet. I'd like a second goal, a bit of a cushion, please. A goal for Chavez Carretero would be perfect right at this this moment here. His Fernandez down the right hand side. Diacarbi, Miretti, Veya. Looking for Aaron, but given away. Will they. Oh, that is actually a really good ball forward. Roberto. They are going to counter attack us here. Maya. We've seen Veya score for us. There's Maya for them. Cobo, Maya. I'm scared. First shot on target. It's going to be a goal. It's a horrible goal. I think they're going to check for. 
offside in there. I don't know where the offside would actually be. I think this one's going to be onside. I think we've conceded an equaliser. We have. It's a really weird finish. I think Colon makes the save and it bounces straight back to him. Look. Oh, it actually comes off the defender. It's not Colon's fault at all. It hits the defender, Diakabi, bounces back and it's an open goal. We've blown our lead from their first shot on target. And now we're a little bit worried that they're going to go and score another one. I guess it was their second shot on target because of the first one and the, the rebound, wasn't it? First proper highlight from that they've scored again. It is Roberto Fernandez. It's his 15th of the season. We've blown a, a lead here. We looked comfortable. They hadn't had a shot and now we find ourselves 2-1 down. 15 for the season for their striker. And it does mean we drop out of the top four. We need... There's a change. Berkovec on and Perez back to defence. We need to find an equaliser. We are... I mean, we're not creating that many chances, or at least highlights. We have one now. Keeper has claimed the corner. Wouldn't be a great result to lose at home here. I think the home form is going to be really important for us if we're going to finish in this top four. This guy looks great. Maybe we should sign him. He's going to score again, is he? No, good save. Given away, but a good save from Matthew Colon. He's a good keeper, isn't he, Colon? Five minutes to play. Can we find an equaliser? Markovic down the left. This would not be a good result. We'd need... Maybe we're missing Lavia in there. That's an offside Alejandro. Put it in, but it is definitely offside. Maybe we're missing him. Hedwig Koch is on the pitch right now. So we, and Geffroy's come on too. We've lost the game. That is the final whistle. I'm not sure... Maybe we did deserve to lose it. They ended up having five shots on target and a, a better XG than us. So maybe it was just a bad day at the office for us. Our team ended up looking like this. Keiki made his way onto the pitch. We had Cock came on, Geffroy came on. Not a great game from Charles Caratero. And if he doesn't have a good game, maybe we do struggle because we don't have a lot in, in reserve as striker, do we? Good Johnson's our backup striker. Not sure he's quite good enough. We've lost that game. We're going to leave it there for today. There is work to be done. Let me just go to the league table to show as we're going to hopefully finish off this and hopefully get Mbom to come in. The league table as we finish today's episode looks like this. We're in a battle. We are going to be behind Espanyol with them in a game, having a game in hand. They could be four points clear of us. That remains the aim. Next episode will be towards the end of the season. If we're still in with the shout of qualifying for the Champions League, we might play multiple games, the run in and do it live together because that can be quite exciting. If that is the case, I will see you for that. If we if we're comfortable, you'll probably just see us at the end of the season as we think about building for our third season at the club. Let's pray for a, qual a qualification for the Champions League. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, leave a like on the video. Let me know your comments down below. If you're struggling for what to comment, just say thank you for the video. Or you could predict where we're going to finish this season. Do you think we're going to make that Champions League? And uh, that can be your prediction as a comment for today's video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you for watching today. I'll see you next time. Have a lovely rest of your day. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye. Two-handed salute again to finish off. Why not? Bye-bye. <laughs> See you in a bit.